question. Greetings, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about hip abduction, range of motion using a goniometer. It's a very important test for anyone who has hip pain, issues with walking, general uh, lower body dysfunction. The test is indicated whenever we want to measure uh, initial range of motion, measure progress throughout the course of therapy, and also to compare both sides. We're going to go into the test in a little bit. First, we're going to explain a little bit of the biomechanics. So let's take a look at the anatomy. The hip joint is an articulation between the convex head of the femur and also the concave acetabular fossa of the hip. This effectively connects the upper body and the lower body, so we can see right away, essential for locomotion. Um, in terms of the movement, abduction occurs in the frontal plane, and you should be able to see a nice axis of rotation right through the head of the femur from an anterior to posterior perspective. So let's see how this movement occurs. I'm going to rotate the skeleton. We see a primary mover right away, this big uh, gluteus medius muscle, um, which connects to the greater trochanter of the femur. The abduction is also supported by the gluteus minimus, also the tensor fascia lata, and let's not forget upper fibers of the gluteus maximus. In terms of uh, the articulation, we can see right away that we have a superior roll of the head of the femur, and that is also um, corresponded by a inferior glide of the head of the femur. This inferior um, glide is, is going to help us feel the end feel. It's going to be a firm end feel from the inferior capsule. Um, and it's also going to be limited by the um, really strong iliofemoral ligament, also known as the Y ligament. Let's not forget, there's also going to be passive tension occurring from the adductor muscles on the other side of the femur. So now that we've taken a look at the anatomy, we're going to go into some testing. Okay, we're going to start with active range of motion of hip abduction using the goniometer. So as you can see, we have our patient here in soup sideline. So the we'll big cue for the patient here is to have if you could, uh, Alyssa, raise your foot to the ceiling, and we're just going to demonstrate first. Perfect. So that's exactly the, um, the motion for hip abduction we're looking for. So I'm going to palpate your ASIS, which is the little bump here on your hip. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just going to make sure I have the proper landmark. This ASIS is the axis of the goni, um, and the stationary arm is pointed to the opposite ASIS. So I've got, I've got the landmarks, I'm going to squat down a bit, uh, and I'm going to try to keep my hand here so I can make sure I feel for end range, which is going to be movement of the ASIS, which you can no longer abduct her hip using just her femur. And Alyssa, whenever you're ready, you could go and move this leg towards the sky, and I'm going to make sure good you stay in great alignment. I'm still feeling for compensation. Your trunk stayed very neutral. I have my goni at 90 degrees from ASIS to ASIS. Okay. And you can relax. Okay. So she had great hip abduction. She had even greater than 45 degrees which is perfect, we're looking for about 40 to 45 degrees. Now that we've done uh, active range of motion, we're going to move into passive range of motion. The real difference here is we're not going against gravity, and I'm going to be producing the movement. Um, so as you can see, we have Alyssa here in supine. Um, and we have Alyssa uh, draped, and I can see her ASIS. Alyssa, do you mind if I grab onto your ankle here? We're going to be grabbing the ankle just to make sure that uh, there's no rotation so we can her leg in neutral, so no, no compensations. Um, and Alyssa, I want you to stay completely relaxed, as loose as you can, and I'm going to add up to your leg to the side. Okay. All right, so I'm going to palpate, I'm going to do this first without the, the goniometer, and I'm going to palpate your ASIS. Make sure I keep your ankle neutral. And I'm just kind of feeling for end range. 
you can see if I pull hard, and um, you probably don't want to pull as hard as you can with an actual patient, but you can see her start to compensate. Um, that, that's the beginning of end range, so end range is right about there. So I'm going to move you back, I'm going to set my goni up. The uh, one thing I forgot to mention in active is that the movable arm is in line with the midline of the femur. So we definitely want to have our femur exposed. So once again, I'm going to grab your ankle here. Just stay nice and relaxed. I'm going to set up my goniometer. Right here is your ASI. Just relax. Keeping my ankle in neutral. I'm moving down the midline of the femur. Typically, this is actually going to produce a few more degrees than um, an active before we get end range. Now I'm over her axis, 90 degrees, plus about 45, so I'm going to remove her. All right, I just wanted to touch on a few things, um, a couple of the key points. Um, we always want to remember to make sure the patient is comfortable, draped for modesty, they understand uh, what you're doing and you're, you, t you speak and inform them before you touch them. Um, we want to have the um, axis of the goniometer on the ASIS of the hip that we're measuring with the stationary arm pointed to the opposite hip. And as I mentioned in the video, we always want to remember to have the movable arm in line with the uh, midline of the femur. Hopefully if we remember these uh, key tips, we'll have very successful and accurate measurements of hip active range of motion and passive range of motion. These are both valid and reliable tests. Um, and a, a couple, couple studies have been done to show this. For instance, there was a 2010 study um, done on patients with FAI by uh, Nussbaumer and his colleagues. And they found that um, interclass uh, correlation coefficient of hip abduction using the goniometer was 0.94. And this was actually the highest uh, mark of any of the hip measurements they looked at. So uh, with that, we can definitely see that it's a, a valid test. And they also had really strong test retest uh, ICC of uh, 0.92. So we definitely can consider it um, a reliable test uh, with those in mind. So um, just want to let you guys know that we use our course notes for this uh, and we also used our textbook. Um, so very, uh, very good text, highly recommend. Um, it's uh, Measurements of Joint Motion, uh, with the subtitle of A Guide to Goniometry. Um, and it's uh, by uh, Joyce White. Thank you very much.